Hello and welcome to season two of Teacher Talk, the podcast for teachers who are lifers but still want to have a life. I'm Jared, and as always, I'm joined by my partner, Johanna. Hello, Johanna. Hi, Jared. What are we going to talk about today? Tricks for one-day learning experiences. Tricks for one day. Yes, this could be because you're a sub. It could be because you're doing any type of... In teaching, sometimes we get stuck teaching a group of kids we didn't expect to teach. Yeah, okay. It happens more than you think it would happen. So you don't have your regular these plan. aren't and These aren't your regular kids. Potentially isn't even your regular school. Maybe it's actually teachers that you are teaching and you're having to do a learning experience for adults. Uh, these tricks work if you are going into a setting where you're supposed to be the teacher, but there's no sort of like, and we're doing this the next day and the day after that and the day after that. You know, you didn't have something to build upon and you, you're not coming back to it after that. It's, it's a one-off. One-off. Yep. So instead of like a TV show that's a series. Correct. Like they all are now because of peak TV. You just have like one episode and... That's it. Bo and, and Duke are going to, you know, shoot their arrows and uh, mess up Boss Hog. I have no idea which thing you're referencing. It's a Dukes of Hazard. Oh, okay. Most TV used to be one-off episodes, basically. Oh, really? Yeah, they didn't really carry much. I mean, it's the same characters from show to show, but they didn't. What happened oh, on no, the previous they, episode they didn't have that. much to do with the the, the oh. current episode. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like on Cheers, like they they talk. There was a running gag about like Cliff went to Florida. But, like, you didn't need to know that. Because back then, you know, it was broadcast. So they, they, they didn't want people, like, refusing to turn in for episode 12 because they hadn't seen episode 9, right? Yes. That'd be bad. That's why, uh, like, sequels don't get numbers after, like, three in movies. So you have, like, Terminator 1 and Terminator 2 and Terminator 3. But, like, the last Terminator was, like, Terminator Dark Fate. Got it. They don't want to say Terminator 7. Because, yeah. Because they're like, oh, well, I didn't see 4, 5, or 6. What am I going to do? Even though it turns out Terminator Dark Fate is really kind of a sequel to Terminator 2 because of time travel. But it doesn't matter okay. that much. Yeah, since I haven't seen the Terminator movies, let's one dive off. on in. One, one off. off. Like, we're writing a Twilight Zone episode. Or, yeah. a, or a Black Mirror if for the kids. It's okay. Big, it's, it's Twilight Zone, but new. Okay. Except not the new Twilight Zone. No one watched that. Got it. One off. One offs. Got it. Okay. So first thing, shake the hand or high five or greet every student or person as they walk into the space. That'd be on your Keno game, right? What's that? It's like a pickup artist thing. It is? Yeah. Oh, okay. So if you're trying to pick up women, you got to like touch them. Okay. But not creepily. That's creepy. Yeah, this but, is not creepy. Yeah. This is like, I acknowledge that you are a person I do not know and that I am a person like that you don't know and that we should meet each other. It's actually kind of the same basic purpose. Yeah. By, and it's going to cause... Est- establishing physical contact, you're creating warmth and confidence into the relationship. It's going to cause a backlog. And if you happen to be listening to this and there's going to be like more than 70 people, then it's probably not going to be possible. But then you could walk around at the different tables before you start. But you got to, you got to, by treating them like an individual, you're going to get, everything else is just going to be better. So do that. I bet you do eye contact while you're doing that too. Yeah, eye contact. Uh Uh-huh. Just like the pickup artist. Yeah. I mean, sit yourself in a chair if they're little kids so that you're at their eye level. It makes it easier than the kid. You don't have to say, like, please look up. You'll be at the kid's eye level already. And, yeah, greet them. Immediate positive personal relationship. Yep. Smile. Yep. All that. Got it. Okay. Next. As soon as they walk into the space, if you're subbing and there isn't 
a bell ringer or an activity for them to do as soon as they come into the room, which a lot of times, particularly elementary, the teacher probably already has a structure where the kids are supposed to, there's some sort of routine or process or something that they're supposed to do right away when they get in the space. But in case there isn't one, you should have one pre-planned in your back pocket. Okay. Like, give me like a one example. Um, you could have a little survey that they that they fill out. Kind of like, like, like an icebreaker? Sort of. Um, more like, tell me a little bit more about you. So, uh, for example, you could ask them how like much... A, like an icebreaker? Sure. How much do they enjoy this class? Um, is there anything that they should know about you so that you can have a successful learning experience? Um, it could include a little blurb about who you are. So they're getting to know a little bit about you. But the main point is that you've got an activity to do at the very beginning so you have order established from the outset. Yeah, and it gives you something like if they're being disrespectful or naughty or aren't doing something that they're supposed to, like rather than saying like don't throw blah, 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 instead you, you can ask like, oh, did you already complete da-da-da? It could be if the teacher has a projector, it could be that you're showing um, some sort of interesting video that's going to catch their attention or just anything that kind of sets a positive, good tone. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So next thing you're going to want to make sure to collect all of those and to go ahead and let part of the time be you looking at each one or collecting each one. You're actually going to do something with the icebreaker. Yes. This is where sometimes I have preset um, like a two and a half minute video that the students do while I'm collecting the information. And so they, again, even if all I'm doing is like, I take your sheet and I look at it for five seconds and then and say thank you and then collect the next one. It's another personal interaction Um that even if I only have a 40 minute class or a 30 minute class, it lo- sounds like it's stealing time, but in actuality, it's going to save you time because it's just all you need is to create positive interactions for that small chunk of time. And so this little thing will help kind of set that groundwork. Yep. Okay. Delegate is the next one. Delegate, delegate, delegate. What's that mean? Uh, I mean, so, I, I know what it means, but. What's it mean? Go ahead and based on the whatever you're going to need for that time period, based on the teacher plans that were left, based on whatever the learning outcome is, decide what type of things you're going to have to do as a teacher and instead figure out a student to do it. Like what? So for example, if you need to get everyone's attention because you need to start teaching, Ah. have a kid be in charge of getting everyone else's attention. So they're going to just stand up and and say it's... Attention, attention. May I have your attention? The kid who needs attention or wants attention at this point has probably already made themselves known to you. Right. And so they're now the person. They can be the attention getter. They are the attention getter. Oh, clever. It's what they already want to do anyway. That's some judo teaching moves right there. And then you just ask them like, hey, I'm going to need someone that gets everyone's attention. Would you be willing to do that for me? Mm, Clever. Yep. Okay. Brief and, aside. Yeah. At, at my work, yeah. when, when there's like a fire drill or something, yeah, the, there's like these speakers and this voice comes out and says, attention, attention, may I have your attention, please? Attention, attention, may I have your attention, please? Okay. A fire has been reported in the building. Please exit through the... And, and, it takes about that long to get to the information yes. about what's happening. Really, the the guy could just say, fire, 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 yes. fire. Alice, Alice training would dictate that, that that is actually not the way to report that there is a problem. If, if you're a teacher listening to this and you have not experienced Alice training, I would ask your school district about it because I, I will give a positive shout out for Alice training. But anyway, I find it very annoying because you're just sitting there 
waiting like, to find yes is that is a, not what you is need is there a shooter is there a storm you, is yeah, there a fire i'd like to i'd like to kind of i mean it's usually a drill or it's always a drill in my experience but but, but theoretically but, someday it won't be and i'll be sitting there on fire waiting for the person to make sure that i have his attention yes 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 anyway okay the attention needer you becomes need- the attention getter Yes. And you're killing two birds with one stone there somehow. Because I need you to get everyone's attention. Yeah. And they might do something very disrespectful to get it. But on the other hand, if they had to go to those lengths to get the attention, A, probably they're the type of kid that all the other kids stop and listen to anyway. Hmm. Uh, And B, well, apparently that's what was needed to get everyone's attention. Like, I, I mean, you just, at this point, you're just roll. You don't get to set more than the tone than you already have, right? You've greeted every person. You asked about who they were as people. You made a second personal interaction. If the kid yells, everybody shut up. Well, I mean, they did get everyone's attention. What's another (laughs) delegation example? Okay, timekeeper. What's that person do? So after you get everyone's attention, show another line of respect by saying like, okay, so our time gets done at da 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 um, What time should we make sure we stop so everyone can get packed up and ready? Like, what's a reasonable amount of time? And some kid will be like, 15 minutes. And, Probably too much. And then you just ignore them. And then you find some quiet person and you're like how much time do you think they need and they'll be like three minutes and you'll be like great I want you to be my timekeeper and then also the teacher has outlined for us that we're supposed to do this this and this how much time should we dictate for each one of those activities okay will you be our timekeeper for that so now again the timekeeper though is just turning to the attention attention seeker and they are saying like, hey, we're supposed to move on to the next activity. This is all consistent with many of your general themes of you taking the apparent control out of your hands and turning them just into rules that we agree to. Right. There are places where you can have a fight and you don't have to. Like have, an, have a person, another person in charge of it. It works well for meetings with adults. It's just helpful. Okay. Then the next one I have down is a content expert. So if you are coming into a classroom and you do not know that content, that can feel very scary because you don't want the kids to know you don't know the content. And you can just decide to like be upfront with it. Like I am subbing in an art classroom and I am not an art expert. Is there someone in here that's willing to be our classroom expert for if a person has a question or concern about the learning and I am unable to help them. In business, we call this SMEs. Okay. Well, a lot of times no kid will volunteer themselves. So you have to ask for someone to nominate a uh-huh, friend. Clever. Yeah. And you can get like, shoot, get three or four. Like, it doesn't matter. Like, just just be willing to say like, okay. And so our, we'll, we'll agree that da-da-da and da-da-da and da-da-da are our content experts you're going to go see them if you uh, if you see me and it doesn't work and I can't help you, then we'll move on to them. Okay. If you have questions about how to do things. Yeah. I also recommend an attendance taker. Teachers can worry about this one because what if a kid lies about the attendance? Oh, no. We're going to get to that in a second. Um, another great one is a note taker. So if you are subbing, you create some sort of sub plan, like you create sub notes, right? To tell what's going on. You need someone that's going to like dictate what happened in the classroom. Like, what did I do as your teacher? Like, again, you're taking it out of the hands of you. So this is where you can say like, so-and-so was our attention getter. So-and-so was this. And if they're high school kids, they're not going to want to volunteer for any of this stuff. So you're just going to have to start pinpointing people out. And you can tell this by whoever like, like, didn't give you a warm, fuzzy vibe. (laughs) They probably need a job because if they have a job, then there's buy-in and then they're not going to be a problem. And all of this stuff sounds like it takes a lot of time, but probably you've now wasted six minutes of class that you potentially saved because now you shouldn't have the type of problems that you might have had. 
moving forward. And if you're like, based on the school or based on my knowledge, like I don't need a note taker, great, then don't have that job. But these are just some ideas of things that I have used in the past when I was doing a one-off. All right, is that all I need to know? Uh, the ne- the last thing would be a backup plan for in case there is no sub plan, in case what was planned doesn't take enough time or what was planned like doesn't work. Like it is bombing. Nothing is going well. So you, none of your jokes are working. So you tell the aristocrats. Oh, no. <laughs> That's a... it's the same principle. Okay. Oh, you yeah, because your you're, com- you're a comic. Okay, I was going to say, the aristocrats joke can be really like... Don't, 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 don't do that in the no. school. Yeah, but don't do that. Pre- you had your set. You thought it was going to work. It didn't work. The audience doesn't have it. It says, okay. It's time to go to the aristocrats. Yes. That is what you need. And what's what's a school example of the aristocrats joke? Uh, the string game always... Uh, any team bonding activity... So the string game is when you put kids in like groups of like four or five or ten. If you do longer than ten, it takes a really long time. And and you randomly hand, you get them in a circle and then you randomly hand a string to, they have to, untie themselves. to all the different kids and then they have to all untie themselves into a long thing. Another one is that you have like a poster and like you just go to to Walmarts or whatever and buy a poster, glue it onto poster board so it's stiffer. And then you can either cut it out in squares or you can cut it out in actual puzzle pieces. But then you physically hand two puzzle pieces to Jared, two puzzle pieces to the next kid. Again, don't do groups larger than 10. Team bustle putting together in this. Yes. Yeah. Make sure, yeah, don't make it too complicated. It's harder than you think it would be. But you'll be shocked at how they naturally start to care to put together the puzzle. Cards, any sort of card game also can go well. And this is just to keep order. You're saying we're, we're giving up on learning. You've given up. At this point, you have given up. Our goal now is to just not have any serious not have discipline anything issues. anything really have- bad happen. Yeah. Okay, go videos also work extremely well. Like, let's say you have total chaos. Like, there is literally not one single kid that is with you. It is very, very bad. If you have a projector, turn the lights off, put on an okay okay, go video, or like the humans can do incredible things video, and they will magically all start sitting down and watching. Okay, go videos are pretty neat. Do we need to say what those are? So Type in OK Go. They're a band. No, I don't think they play the music. No, they're a band. They are? the That is their music? Yeah. I didn't know that. I thought they were just the artists who made the... No, they're, they're a band. Those are just really? their music videos. Yes. Those are just their music videos? Yeah. Shoot, they're better than I thought they were. I thought they were like... You didn't notice the music all sounds basically you know similar? Like. I thought they had some sort of contract. Yeah. No, it, they're a band. They made a music video with themselves on the treadmills. treadmills. And yep. it was a big hit with this single take choreographed thing. And they've gone kind of nuts since then doing single take choreographed videos that are pretty amazing. I dare a human, if the OK Go videos are on, to not start watching after two minutes. Like, I dare them to. I don't think they can do it. No, they're, they're pretty enrapturing. Yeah. All right, so as a substitute, you show up and you just play OK Go videos for the entire hour. Boom. We did it. No, recap. (laughs) Tricks for one day learning experiences, like you're a sub or you're filling in for someone. It's not really your classroom that you're running. So you're having to do one day management of the classroom behavior. Yeah, or you're doing, you're providing content or curriculum for teachers or whatever you're going to act like a pickup artist but not creepy don't be creepy no it's the same principles the reason you're trying yeah you're trying to get people to like you you're gonna try yeah right exactly um and to do that here you're going to do a handshake or a high five some kind of physical contact with every person unless it's a huge group and make eye contact and smile while you're doing it yeah step one 
while you're doing this, you're going to notice the people that seem like they're mad at you for no reason. Yeah. You're going to have uh, an activity uh, that's both kind of a, it doesn't even really have to be an icebreaker. I can say an icebreaker, but mostly it's something that they're doing so that there's order immediately. Yeah. Again, the video thing, like if you don't want to ask them questions about themselves or collect anything like. But if you do, it's another chance to get a little bit of feedback on what, what they're about. And whether they're going to be problems or not. Plus, it also helps you kind of personalize your relationship quickly. Yeah. Um, you're going to make the activity. You're actually going to collect the results of the activity. So that and act like you cared about it. Yes. It's just worth the time. Yes. To help, again, establish the relationship. You're going to delegate. So your attention needer becomes your attention getter. Instead of saying, classes, listen to me, it's time to pay attention. You have your delegate do it for you. Mm-hmm. And, and if your delegate needs to get attention every two minutes, you're just going to have them have an opportunity to get every. <laughs> I mean, because you're not the teacher. Yeah. You're not trying to solve the problem that this child or adult wants attention. You are just trying to make sure that that person is not preventing learning. That's right. that is all you're doing. You talk about like how much time we need to clean up or f- get ready for the next class at the end yeah and then we decide how many minutes it is and then you set a timekeeper or a person I mean, it could that's be if you're in industrial tech like they might need 10 minutes for cleanup because otherwise you might have a people might quit and act like it's time to start and then that's a chance to lose control of the class yep was if you establish it and then put a delegate in charge of it boom. We're not, yep yep um you can ask for Content experts, SMEs, subject matter matter experts, but you might not get volunteers because no one wants to claim to be the nerd, but you have their friends rat on them for being nerds. Yes. By nominating them as yeah. someone that can help with how-to questions that you might not know yeah. as the substitute teacher. If you're scared by the technology... Have a like then make the job that someone's in charge of your technology. I mean, anything that makes you nervous, delegate that stuff out. Attendance taker. Yep. You said you had, what if they lie and someone's missing and then they get eaten by wolves? Uh, I have the notes taker write down all the who's responsible for the different jobs. So the note taker will get the attendance taker in trouble if they lie. Yeah. I mean, either A, the attendance taker lied and called. I mean, because you can do this, right? If there are 22, all you have to do is a head count. So if you have a class list that says there's 24 and there are two kids absent, then you should have two kids marked absent. Got it. If not, you just go back to the attendance taker. And if they mark someone absent who was there or vice versa, then that's, again, that's not your problem. Like the teacher knows who took attendance. Got it. And then there's a note taker who's the who yeah. writes down your notes for the the teacher that's coming back. Yeah. Now I wouldn't use that as the sole thing. Like I would still take my I would write down who did every job. And if the note taker doesn't, then I would just say there are no there are no notes because the note taker didn't didn't take any. Okay. Yeah, that's not your problem. And then emergency backup plan. Yep. If we give up on learning and we just want to prevent serious behavior problems to deal with later that the administrator or that the, the returning teacher has to deal with, we're going to be like, we're, we're going to reach into our Mary Poppins bag and bring out the string and do the string untangle game. Mm-hmm. Or we're going to watch OK Go videos. Yep. Or we do like a team puzzle put together thing, some sort of. Or if they are younger kids have some books you're really good at reading do Kids. you read to them yeah yeah or that you can get, find just teacher story time but yep yep it's hard to not want to pay attention to teacher story time even better you can find videos that are reading books to kids and they will sit down and listen okay yeah well, thank you johanna thank you jared Jonna, do you get questions from listeners ever? Yes, we do. How do those listeners send you questions? They send us an email. Where does that email go? Teacher talk for teachers at gmail.com. But wait, 
What kind of four? How do I do four? All of the fours. They can do a number four. They can write the word F-O-R or they can do F-O-U-R, even though that one doesn't quite make sense. Well, perfect. Teacher talk for teachers at gmail.com. Yes. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you, Jared. Teacher Talk, the podcast for teachers who are lifers but still want to have a life.